Hello fellow travelers, I'm Nomad Jim, a retired, minimalist, solo, full-time, slow traveler. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to talk about slow travel. I'm going to give you my definition of slow travel, and I'm also going to give you seven qualities that I think are important to have if you're going to be a slow traveler. So let's get started. The way that people tend to define slow travel is by the amount of time that you spend in a place. They'll say either it's a week or two weeks or a month, two months, or even more than that. I think it's much more than just the amount of time that you spend in a location. So I think of three different things that define slow travel for me. The first is you have enough time that you feel relaxed in that location. You don't feel rushed. It's not like a vacation where every day is scheduled and you're doing things one day after another and keeping very busy. And then by the time it's over, you're totally exhausted. Slow travel is not like that. You have much more time to do the things you like to do and you feel relaxed doing it. The second thing is that you're spending time doing things that are not tourist related. Yes, you'll occasionally do some of those tourist related activities like sightseeing and tours, but most of the time you're just going to be doing normal daily living. And the third thing is that you have enough time to truly immerse yourself in a location in a way that's enjoyable to you. So that may be that you like to enjoy the culture, or maybe it's the foods, the history, the architecture, the nature, the lifestyles, the people, whatever it is that interests you, you have enough time to truly dive deeply into that and to make a meaningful connection with those types of things that are of interest to you in that location. So those are the things to me that define slow travel. It's at a pace that's relaxed. It's doing things that are beyond the normal tourist activities, just the daily living sort of thing. And also you have that time to really delve deeply into a location and make it something that's meaningful for you, something that you really enjoy, getting to know it at a deeper level in a way that you could never do on a typical vacation. Now there are different ways that you can do slow travel. One way is to do it full time which is what I do. And by doing it full time, that means I do not have a home back home to go back to. When I go back to visit family and friends in the United States, I either stay with them or I stay in an Airbnb apartment. So I don't have a location back home that I stay in. So what I'm doing is I'm always moving forward, traveling to the next destination. And many people slow travel part time. So they may spend only a month or two in a location and then they go back to their home base where they spend a month or two, whatever it is, to recharge before going back out again and exploring some more. It's totally up to an individual what feels comfortable to you. And that's something that you can try yourself and see what works for you. How long you like to be out away from your home before you come back. So maybe you're wondering if slow travel is right for you. Well, I'm going to give you seven qualities that I think are important to have if you're going to be a slow traveler. And the first one is that you have a curiosity and wish to immerse yourself in a location to better learn about that location. So it may be something culturally that you want to do. So if that's something you enjoy doing, then you may end up going to lots of different museums attending local events, trying the cuisine in different restaurants and different places around the city that you're in. Or maybe you want to learn the language. Or perhaps your way of immersing yourself is by doing an activity that you really like, say, like hiking. So your, your idea of slow travel would be to go to places where there's an abundant number of hiking trails that you can avail yourself of. So you can base yourself in this one location for a period of time and spend as much time as you want to explore all of these different trails that are in the area. 
or maybe you're a surfer and your idea of slow travel is to go to different surf spots around the world, maybe places that aren't as popular as others, and spend your time doing that until you're ready to move on to the next location, the next surf spot, or whatever it is. So there's just a variety of different things. The key thing is you're doing things that you enjoy doing, and you're spending the time there to really immerse yourself to enjoy those things in the way that you like to enjoy them. Number two is, you like the idea of living amongst the locals and you don't have a problem with being away from the tourist area. Now you can slow travel and stay in the tourist area, but by staying in a local neighborhood, you're going to get a more authentic experience and you're going to have an opportunity to enjoy restaurants that are much more authentic and much more reasonably priced than you're going to see in the tourist areas. So these are things that, will make you feel more like you're part of the community. And in time, if you're, say, going to a coffee shop every morning, the staff there is going to start to recognize you after a while, and they'll know when you walk in the door what you're going to order. So you essentially become a regular there. And that's a nice feeling. It makes you feel like you're part of the neighborhood, part of the community. And those are the types of things that you can experience when you're in a more local neighborhood. Number three is you don't mind having days that aren't filled with tourist activities like sightseeing or touring. Sure, when you first arrive at a location, you may want to do some of those things to see the highlights of the location. But after that, you're just going to be doing normal daily living sort of things. So those are the kind of things that we do regardless of where we are in the world. And those are the kind of things you would be doing as well on most of your days. So if that's not a problem for you, that you don't have things scheduled every day like you do on a vacation, then you'll do fine with this pace of travel. So related to that is number four, and that is that you don't get bored easily. As I said, you're not going to be doing tourist-related activities most of the time, so you're going to have a lot of free time. And that's a perfect opportunity to do the things that you really enjoy doing, your hobbies, whether it's reading or hiking, surfing, going to work out, whatever those things are that you enjoy doing. And it's the same thing as if you're back home. Think about it in that way. There's those routines and those things that you enjoy doing on a daily basis that you were doing back home. You can still do those for the most part when you're traveling as well. So. If you're able to fill your time with those types of activities that bring you joy, then you'll do fine with having this other time available to you that's not filled with tourist activities. And number five is that you don't get homesick easily. Now we all get homesick from time to time and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're able to handle that by occasionally having a video chat with family or friends, sending messages occasionally, things like that, to keep yourself connected, then you'll do fine with being homesick occasionally, but not so often that it's causing you to be wanting to go back home. And for me, there's a routine that I do in the morning when I am having my breakfast. I like to do a couple of the puzzles from the New York Times. I do the Wordle and Connections. And then I share my results with other friends of mine who do the same thing. So on a daily basis, we're sending messages to each other about our results on those puzzles. And also it gives us an opportunity to maybe say a word or two about things that are going on as well. So we're able to stay connected in that way. And also it's a way to check up on each other because there have been times where I had an early flight and so I didn't get around to doing the puzzles in the morning like I normally do. And then later in the afternoon, I get a message from my friend saying, hey, everything okay? Haven't heard your results yet this today. Just checking in on you to make sure you're all right. So it's a way to stay connected. And it's also a way to check in on each other to make sure everything is all right. And number six is you're flexible. It can go with the flow. Now, when you're slow traveling, Guaranteed, things do not always go to plan. 
So when that happens, if you're able to roll with it, deal with it, and move on, then that's a very important quality to have because things are going to happen and you're going to have to adjust and deal with it and just move forward. So if you have that kind of personality that can handle adversity and changes and things that don't quite go the way that you thought they would go, then you'll do okay. And number seven is you can accept that things are just gonna be a little different in the location that you're in. When you go on a short vacation, you'll notice some things that are different and they may make you question, why do they do that this way here? But you know that you're only gonna be there for a few days, so it doesn't really bother you that much. But if you're gonna be slow traveling and spending a longer period of time in a location and those little things that are different start to bug you, then you're gonna have some problems because you really just need to accept that things are different. It's not that they're wrong and you're right or vice versa. It's just that you're different. You do things differently and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just culturally how things are in different places around the world. So just learn to accept that. And also, occasionally you'll find things that are different that make you say, why don't we do it that way back home? And that's something I'm going to do a video on that here in the future about things that I've noticed as I've traveled around the world that made me say that I really wish we did it that way or that we had that back home. So watch for that video coming out in the future. So if these seven qualities describe you, then you're a great candidate for slow travel. I'll be posting more videos in the future about slow travel and also different tips that I have for all travelers. So subscribe to the channel so that you'll be able to enjoy that content in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please like it. And as I said before, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, let's get out there and travel.